Hello to all the viewers of The Cross TV. Uh, I'm Pastor Richard Severberger from Brazil, and I greet you with the peace of Jesus Christ for all of you. Especially greetings to my friend, Pastor Dr. Joseph Nassara, great mighty man of God. So today we are doing here more one class of the School of Ministry. In the School of Ministry, we are learning all different aspects of ministry with different schools, like the School of Prophecy, the School of Discipleship, Evangelism, the School of Mission. And today we are doing the School of Mission. And we are now in the second lesson of the School of Mission. We are learning two practical things, what I do in action. You will learn the principles how to do missions. So it's a lesson combined of testimonies, a story of what we do in action, in practice, in the same time learning the principles how to do mission. So mission is to do the work of evangelism and the work of discipleship outside of your own context, in another country, in another language, another people group. So, now today, we want to go to a verse to understand a very important aspect about mission and what is the will of God about mission. Let's see two Bible verses. Let's first go to Matthew chapter 28. And let's go there to the Great Commission in Matthew chapter 28, starting from verse 18 to the end of the chapter, 18, 19, and 20, those three verses. And Jesus came and spake and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things, whatever I have commanded you, and I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So here, Jesus said, teach all nations. So mission is to do in all the world, to all the nations. And it's the responsibility of the local church to train people to do that, to send them out, and to support them with prayers and with financial gifts so that they can do the work of God Everywhere in the world. So it's always to the local church that prepare missionary, send the missionary out to do the work of God. So, and supporting with prayers and with finances. Let's go to another Bible first, Revelation. And then chapter 7, and we're going to read there first, 9. Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. After this, I beheld an eo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations in Kindreds and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the lamp, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. So in heaven, there will be people of all the nations, of all the tribes, of all the people group, and of every different tongue. So every person who has a different type of a culture, different type of a language, all the people are created in the image and likeness of God. And God wants to have people from everywhere in the world, where there may be a tribe, where there may be a village, there may be a family, that all of them, they will get safe. So the great commission of God, and this, this whole world is going to get safe. He gave the order that every part of this planet Earth, people need to be saved to be in heaven and represent because every people group, every tribe, every tongue belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why God says to the Son prophetically in Psalm 2, if we go to Psalm 2, it's God speaking to his Son and saying to the people what the nation of the world need to do is to accept his Son as the Savior. And his Son is Jesus. And God says this to the Son, verse 8. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thy inheritance, and the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession. 
So God is telling to the Son, Jesus Christ, as to me, and I will give all the heathens, everyone who doesn't belong to the people of Israel, those are the heathens, so all the nations, even to the most, uttermost part of the earth, as your possession. So by faith, those people were not of the tribe of, not of the nation of Israel. So we as Brazilian, I'm a, I'm a Dutch Brazilian, I'm not a part of Israel, can become descendants of Abraham by adoption, adoption by faith. And God is telling all the world, he's asking Jesus to ask all the world to become part of his kingdom. So that is Jesus giving now the order to the church, go out and preach the gospel in Matthew 20 out. Go out because this whole earth belongs as my inheritance. The name of Jesus must be lifted high and glorified in all the nations of the world. Now, many of us Christians, we want Jesus to come back. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to see Jesus in our midst. We want to see Jesus coming back to live in heaven for eternity. The bride is asking to the bridegroom to come. Now, when will Jesus come back? Nobody knows the exact hour and the moment when Jesus is going to come back. That is a secret that Jesus himself says in the book of Acts. Let's read what Jesus said about his coming and when he will come. Jesus said that, that nobody knows except the Father. Here. Verse 6 and 7 in the book of Acts chapter 1. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So when will you come back? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in his own power. But then he said this about his coming. He's telling this, first eight, and that's what we were already telling in the first lesson. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Jesus is telling here, for me to come back first, this world needs to know who I am. Because when Jesus comes back, then it's the day of judgment, and nobody can be saved. And Jesus said, before I need to come back, the world needs to be saved. Hell needs to be plundered. And all the nations need to come to know who's Jesus. Not only all the nations need to come to accept the Lord Jesus Christ, but every tribe and every language group and every person, people group needs to be saved. So Jesus said, before I need to come back, you guys need to evangelize. Before I need to come back, you guys need to discipleship. Before I need to come back, you need to do mission to all the world. The world needs to, see, need to be safe. I need to be coming back for my people, for my kingdom, for the people that belong to me, to the body of Jesus Christ. So first we need to fill up the church with believers. First we need to make a beautiful bride what is the church. Full with people of every language, of every culture, of every people group. So, to show you that, that Jesus only will come back when the great commission, the great assignment of the church to do mission is fulfilled, only then Jesus will come back. Go with me there to Matthew chapter 24. The most important chapter in the Bible about eschatology about the things that will happen in the end times, about the study of the end time. So in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus says this about when he's going to come back. Verse 14, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Jesus is telling here the end will only come at the moment when we as the body of Jesus Christ, we as a church, has preached, uh, preached the gospel to all the nations, then the end will come. So there's a great assignment for the church to do. And when the church has fulfilled his assignment, then the end will come. So we need to do mission. We need to do mission urgently. If you want Jesus to come back, if you want to live in heaven, you need to fulfill your assignment as a soldier in the body of Jesus Christ. And our assignment is to evangelize, is to disciple, and is to do mission. And if you cannot go to the mission field, 
You pray for the missionary and you give mission offerings so that the missionary can do the work he's being sending out. For those who are not going to another nation, you need to evangelize locally, do it discipleship locally, but you give your offerings and your tithing for the other person to do mission wherever he will go to the other part of the world. So that the kingdom of God will be spread all over this earth. Now, I want to tell to you practical things how we can do mission to other nations. And I want to tell you to you today to two big windows to doing mission. And telling directly to you the mission of quantity and the mission of quality. And both are important. Quantity and quality both are important in the kingdom of God. Now, going back to that verse in Revelation, I want to tell something very important in that verse. In the book of Revelation, there in chapter 7, verse 9, there was written, After this, I behold, and a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, and tribes, and people, and tongues, stood before the throne, and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, and palm in their hands. So there's people of all the nations, all the tongues, all the tribes and all the people group. So God wants people from all the tongues and all the tribes to be saved. So we need to preach the gospel also to the most places in the world where nobody goes. And there are still many people in this world, many tribes and many people of different tongues that never have heard the gospel of Jesus. And this is the mission of quality because most of those people are small communities are not big cities, are not big nations, but are several hundred people, several thousand people that live isolated in the most unreached parts of planet Earth. They live deep inside the jungles of the Earth. We call this the green window. The jungles that we know in Central America, the jungles that go there in the north of Latin America, of South America, but it's the jungles of the Amazons. Then you got the jungles of Central Africa, then you got the jungles of all those islands in Southeast Asia. What is in Vietnam, Thailand, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, Malaysia, Filipino, all those jungles there. That's what we call the green window. And deep inside of those jungles, in those continents there in Southeast Asia, Central Africa, in the north of South America, the Amazon, in the jungles of Central America, Deep inside those jungles where it's difficult to come, it's more easy to go to the other place of planet Earth, to leave here California and to go to Europe or to go to Moscow or to go to Japan, China. It's easier. You will come there faster than to come in those jungles, deep inside in those jungles, those, those people group. There's no internet. There's no modern civilization, as we know today, no roads, no airplanes. But deep inside of those jungles live people who were created in the image and likeness of Jesus. And when Jesus dives upon the cross for them and shed their blood, and wants that the gospel will come to those people. And we want to fulfill the great commission. So I'm Brazil. I'm a teacher and a part of a school called Nascenti, where we train and prepare young people to do mission unto this unreached people group. We prepare them that they will go there, learn that language of the tribe, Translate the Bible in their own language so that every tongue will know the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we translate the Bible into their language. That is very hard work because you need to be a linguistic and you need to know the Bible to translate the Bible that you will. And most of their languages are only spoken languages. So first you need to make the alphabet. You need to make the grammar. And then you need to translate the Bible into their language. That's a lot of work. But when we translate the Bible in the, in the language of those tribes, we will evangelize them and we will win them for Jesus. And so we prepare young people that dedicate their whole life to become linguistics, to become theologians, to become missionaries, to give up their life, to have a successful life here in, the, in America or in Brazil. We to give up their lives, to go into the jungle and to reach those unreached people group with the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is a great work that we do to fulfill the great commission that Jesus may come back. 
So you can be part of this project by your prayers and by your support. You can be part of this project too. So I want to encourage you to pray for this work. That young people will dedicate their lives and to go into the jungles of the green window in the world. That is all there where the jungles are from Central America, in the Amazon, in Central Africa, and Southeast Asia. To go there to preach the gospel. And this moment we have our girl called Natalia that we have trained and that we have repaired. She's now there in the jungles of Cambodia doing mission work there inside the tribes there doing the work of God. And this young girl when she came there in the jungle they eat different type of food. And if you're going to do mission you need to understand you cannot more eat the food that you eat in your supermarket. You cannot buy your locally food that you know. And remember, we as humans, we like the food that we were raised up with our mother. Because most of our flavor, our taste, is involved when we are children until we are teenagers. And after that, what we have learned to love is what we will like for the rest of your life. That's why mother's cooking is always the best for everybody in the world. So if you like, you were raised up in Japan, you will always love Japanese food. If you're raised up in Italy, you always will love Italian food. And that's for everybody in the world. You love your local food. But if you go on mission, you go to a different place, like I said, a different culture where people eat different food. And so you need to start eating different food. So this girl, Natalia, who is a Brazilian girl, cannot more eat the Brazilian food. And Brazilian food is delicious, my friends. If you've never been to Brazil, just come from Brazil for a holiday for food because you will adore our Brazilian food. So this girl must leave all the Brazilian food behind to eat now new type of food. And the new type of food, my friends, you're going to think, man, you cannot eat that. But they're in Kabocha. They eat ants. They eat spiders. They eat snake. They eat all kinds of creepy insects. They eat bats. So this girl started to need to learn to eat all those creepy stuff, man. What she never was used to, to eat all these insects. She started to need to eat those big hairy spiders. They eat them by their legs. So she needed to eat this. Think this girl. And you need to understand, this girl, her father and mother are big lawyers, and her father is the prosecutor of the state of Brazil. He's a very rich and mighty man. This girl could go to the best universities, and she could have got a big income in Brazil, but she put all those things beside to do the work of God, to go there into Southeast Asia, in the jungles of Cambodia, to preach the gospel of Jesus to these people, learning their language, translating the, uh, the Bible into their language, that they will receive the word of God in their own mother tongue. And why is it so important to translate the Bible in their mother tongue? Because the Bible said every tongue will confess the Lord. But do they need to have the Bible in their language? Yes, we want to show that God is the God that speaks every language and loves every language, and you like to hear the gospel in your own mother tongue. If your, main, if your first language is English and you know another language, it's not the same. Always English will be the most important language that will touch your heart. I was raised up in the Netherlands. For me, Dutch is my, my mother tongue. And if you say something Dutch to me, it touches me way better. Me and my wife, we speak many languages. But when we speak to each other about love, we always use the Dutch language because that's our mother tongue. So if I say sweet things to my wife, I say it in Dutch and not in other languages because that's my mother tongue and that's her mother tongue. And the same, we want to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ in our mother tongue. So that's what we call doing mission to the green window. And doing mission to the green window is a mission not to reach big numbers of people. But it's to fulfill the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's a mission of quality to receive that every tribe, every language that people have not reached to, to go to the othermost parts of the world, people that have not been reached with the gospel of Jesus Christ, where no one has preached before to preach the gospel. That's what Paul says in the book of Romans. Paul says that about his own ministry that was in the heart of Paul to say, I want to preach the gospel when no one had preached the gospel before. He says that, that in the book of Romans, Paul said this about his ministry, that he says, I want to preach the gospel when no one else had preached the gospel before. That is in Romans chapter 
50. Let's read there. First 18, starting for verse 18. For I will not dare to speak to any of those things which Christ had not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by the word and deed, to mighty signs and wonder by the wonder of the power of the, of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about Illyrium I fully preached the gospel of Christ. He, so I have strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ n- was named, lest I shall build upon another man's foundation. But as is written, to whom he has not spoken of, they shall see, and those that have not heard shall understand. For which cause I also have been much hindered from coming to you. So Paul says, I want to preach the gospel in places where nobody has ever heard the gospel of Jesus Christ before. And that is the green window. To translate the Bible into the language to the unreached people group. To a mission to the unreached people group we are training people. So I ask your prayers, I ask your support to support this kind of ministry to do the mission to the green windows we work together with the ministry called Wycliffe to do this work to reach the unreached people group what I want to tell to you very fast also is about the window 1040 that is mission for big quantity in a world where most people live that don't know Jesus Christ is called in the window 10 by 40 and that is the whole northern of Africa the whole Middle East, then India, Southeast Asia, and China. This is the window 10 by 14. Here lives roughly two-thirds of the whole world population lives there. And here are the three big religions, and oh, the biggest atheist state in the world is on this region, or the religions that are not Christian in this window. The whole Muslim world is inside the 10, window 1040, the whole Hindu world is inside the window 1040. The whole Buddhist world, Buddhist world is in the window of 1040. And also the biggest atheist state in the world, China, is in that window. So two-thirds of the whole world population lives inside the window 1040 with the biggest three religions beside Christianity that don't accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior is in that window, and also China, where the communist state is in that window. So the window 10 by 40 is the most strategic and most important place of the church to do mission for a big quantity, for a huge amount of people. And God wants to have the heavens full with people. So he wants the unrich people group, those are the extracted people that live in the green window in the jungle, but also God wants to have the big numbers of people that lives there in the window 1040 for them to know Jesus Christ, that the gospel will be also announced to them. So we need to have people that really will say, I will learn those cultures. I will love those people. I will embrace them with the love of Jesus Christ. Because to do mission, you need to love those people, love the culture, become one of them. That you say, now I will learn their culture, I will learn their language, and I will become one of them, and I will live in their midst. I've been a missionary, I've been to the Netherlands, going to Brazil, and I needed to learn everything again. And I go all over the world, and everywhere in the world I need to learn everything again. And it's not easy to learn a new language, it's not easy to learn a new culture, but you need to love people to learn their language, to learn their culture, and to become one of them. It's not only the food, it's not only the weather, but it's to love people that are different than you, that do things different than you, and that, that doesn't mean that they're doing better or worse. It's just meaning it's different. And God loves diversity. God loves it from all the people in the world that will be in heaven. That's what we read. Every language group, every people group must be in heaven. So we need to love this diversity that is in humanity. All these different flavors, all these different colors, all these different languages. We need to reach out to all those people groups to preach the gospel to them and win them for Jesus Christ and to bring them to the church. So in the window 1040, we need to learn what is the Hindu culture. What is the Chinese culture? What is the culture of the Middle East? What is the culture of the Buddhist? We need to learn their culture and we need to come and we need to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to them so that their eyes may be opened and they may accept Jesus Christ as the only way, as the only Lord and Savior for their lives. We need to preach Jesus and not to be afraid. So we need missionaries 
that are able to do that. Now, giving my short testimony, I have given my testimony in other less lessons, but giving here today about language to you, because you say, how will I speak the Arabic language? How will I speak the Hindu language? How will I speak Chinese or Vietnamese? I want to tell you to, this to you. To learn another language is very difficult, but with God, all things are possible. I have dyslexia. They said to me it was impossible for me, for me to learn any other language. It's a handicap in your brain to speak a language. If I want to say John, I say Peter. I always mix up the names of my sons. I always say to my elder son the name of the younger son, and the younger son I give the name of my brother, <laughs> so I mix up names. And if I want to write something like the word car, uh, instead of C-A-R, uh, I to R-A-C. I mix it up. So, people said it's impossible for me to learn and speak language. But praise be the name of God. God did the impossible. He co chose me to be a missionary to the world. And I've preached the gospel in more than 40 countries, traveled the world, live, lived in different places, and I have learned more than five different languages that I can preach the gospel to without a translator. What is impossible for man because possible for God. You need to believe in God. God is going to use you for mighty things. You can learn another culture. You can learn another language. Let's pray together that the gospel of Jesus Christ will be known in all the green window, mission of quality, and in the window of 1040, mission of quantity. Let's pray together. Our beloved Father, we thank you. Use us as a missionary that we may go out to a different place of the world to preach your gospel. If it is in the green window or if it is in the in the window 1040, if it is quality or quantity that we may win many souls and when we not can go out, that we as church may send people out with the support of our prayer and our finances. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask this for the glory of God the Father. Amen. God loves you. I love you. Still the next class of the School of Ministry, School of Mission.